Hello, my name is Matt Henley. I'm the Assistant Director of Athletic Bands here at Western Carolina University. I also teach the Marching Percussion Section, and the intent of this video is to introduce the Western way of approaching the marching tenor drums. Uh, as you know, there are many wonderful marching ensembles across the country. Uh, a lot of them approach the drums just slightly differently from each other, and the, approach, the point of today is to show you the Western way. Uh, one important thing to think about when it comes to tenor drumming is staying relaxed. You simply cannot play these drums and be tense at all. So uh, a good start, in my opinion, is to just hold your sticks like, um, like normal, drop them down by your side, step away from the drums, make sure that everything is relaxed in your torso and your, especially in your shoulders and uh, in your arms. Just move your elbows up where you think playing position is kind of going to be. Everything's relaxed and then you move up to the drums. You address the drums then. Uh, a lot of people start at the drums and I just think it causes a lot of problems right off the bat. So you want to be as relaxed as possible. Let's talk about the cage for a second. I refer this to this area as the cage, meaning your left arm and the area you're creating with your torso into your right arm. Um, a lot of people will play with a weak cage when they play tenors, meaning they drop their elbows into their body. Um, this is not good. Also, uh, even worse technique is when you stick your elbows out too far from your body, um, which will, will be even worse for you when you start trying to cross drums, all right? So we, what we want, obviously, it's a natural approach. You should have about a fist worth of space in between your elbow and your body, and make sure that our cage kind of stays just like this. Another thing to think about is this V notch in the top of your hand between your thumb and your forefinger is very important. Make sure that you, when you look down, you can see that. If your thumb's too far on top, that's not good, or too flat like a tabletop is, is worse. So make sure that you can see that notch. Also look at the angle from the bead up through my hand. It's, it's very natural all the way up through my arm up to my elbow. Uh, this, is a, this is a great approach for the tenor drums. Also, you'll notice a slightly larger angle uh, than for perhaps a snare drum. Uh, when it comes to the angle here, when it's just as natural as possible, and we'll adjust the drums accordingly to adjust that angle. All right. Um, next, let's talk about uh, sticks up for a second. Sticks up might be slightly different than what you're used to. Uh, we hold our, our sticks uh, or mallets, it does not matter, at an angle facing forward. Um, this is a lot more natural than trying to hold them flat, which causes tension in the forearms. Okay, so slightly forward, and look, notice how my thumbs are underneath the sticks. They are not behind the sticks, like a lot of groups do. Underneath the sticks, and of course, as we come out, you just slide your thumb to playing position into your fulcrum position, okay? That's very important. Next, let's move on to playing position. Playing position on the drums for tenors, as you know, uh, is different than a standard drumming situation. We try not to drum in the center of the drums due to the dead tone that it creates. We, we uh, want to get off the node of the drum and play just uh, off the edge. So for drum one, we're going to play about three inches in with beads together. Some groups play beads apart. We want you to play beads together. Drum two, same thing. I'm going to keep beads together. Once again, about three inches in from the rim. And we're going to move to drum three. This is when it changes. All right, just to create flow across the drums, we kind of go to this T technique where the right hand's in front of the left, the left hand plays on the back side. I'm going to move to the fourth drum, and the fourth drum's the same thing in a mirror where the left hand is at the top of the T this time. The Spock drums, we play a six and an eight inch Spock. So what we try to do is play just forward of center. That's the most natural uh, position to play when it comes to the, the relationship to your body. So just forward of center, all right? Next, when it comes to playing areas also, uh, in tenor drumming, as you know, it's not just about playing on one drum. We have to play on multiple surfaces. So to achieve that, uh, one standard adaptation a lot of people are, are doing these days is what's called the X and Y axis. The X, the Y axis meaning that we, the up and down motion of actually just drumming. So this is your Y axis, straight up and down. Your X axis is the plane that your arms are moving, meaning this way, okay? And obviously we combine the X and Y axis, making sure that we are always playing with a straight up and down motion no matter what drum we're playing on, okay? That's your Y axis. X axis means we just move our arms accordingly to make sure that that happens. That's a big deal, all right? Uh, let's move on to stroke types. We try to keep it pretty simple at Western where we use basically two stroke types. A staccato stroke, some people refer to this as a down stroke, where we, we hold our fulcrum nice and strong, uh, we, we hold the mallet and or stick in the back of the hand. We don't want to pinch into where it's, we're getting white knuckles or anything, but just firm enough to hold onto the stick to where the entire stroke is being deviated from the wrist only. 
and you're in control of the rebound, either stopping the rebound or stopping it wherever you want it to. That's West staccato stroke. The stroke we use the most, however, is called legato stroke, which is everything still comes from the wrist, but now we're going to start incorporating the fingers and letting the mallet or the stick come out of the palm of the hand. We use a 36912 method of drumming here, uh, stick heights, where at three inches, the levels of legato would mean that I use less finger at three. It's mostly wrist. I'm just letting it breathe a little bit in the back of the palm. Six inches, I start incorporating slightly more finger. And you can see that I'm starting to let the back of the stick move. Nine inches, I'm going to obviously now I'm going to have more finger contribution than before, all coming from the wrist, however. Twelve inches, you need to think about it being vertical to the ground. Notice I have a lot more finger contribution now. Then full out, what we refer to as full out, it's basically 15 inches. We're going to go three inches past vertical. And now we're also going to incorporate the arm for the first time, where our elbow, the third lever of drumming, is going to start moving the stick as well. Really letting the thing fly, okay? Uh, another aspect of tenor drumming we need to talk about is crossovers. Crossovers happen all the time in tenor drumming. A uh, good rule of thumb is that if I'm going to go from one drum to the drum right beside it, you cross over at the fulcrum. You cross over at the fulcrum. It doesn't matter if it's these two drums, or these two drums, or these two drums, you cross over at the fulcrum. If you're going to go more than one drum away, two drums away, I actually cross now at the wrist. And the only time you ever cross at the forearms is when you play drums three and four together. Okay? So um, my, my biggest suggestion to you, though, is to remember that it's all about the performance aspect these days. You've got to make sure that your cage looks good, that, that you've got to stay relaxed, cool, relaxed, and confident, and extremely aggressive. And another thing to think about is your performance quality coming from your chest and your face, making sure that you're really performing to your audience, okay? Because this is all great in the playing, but, it, but if they're not believing you as a performer, it, it's not worth anything. So make sure that you're really performing all the time, and uh, that's pretty much it. That's the Western way. If you have further questions, feel free to contact me anytime to discuss anything. My email address, mhenley, M-H-E-N-L-E-Y, at email.wcu.edu. My phone number, 828-227-2998. And I hope this has been helpful to you, and keep drumming.